Hey guys, it's Ryan, and today I'm going to do a little bit of a no-no in the farming industry, and that is talking about the financial side of farming, and usually it's kind of a hush-hush topic, not a lot of people like to talk about it because it shows just how little a farmer might be making, and I'm going to break it down 44 acres of my total acreages, which I'm running well over 100 this year, um, but I'm going to run you through my 11-acre cornfield as well as my 33 acre bean field. And the corn field has been in continuous, continuous corn for about four years now. And the bean field is uh, in a no-till. Um, no-till corn and beans, uh, continuous rotation. So uh, I'm gonna break down all of my expenses and it might look a little brim. I'm not totally sure. I haven't broken down just these acres, so we'll see how it looks. But what we're going to do is start with seed, and that's one of the more um, bigger costs of farming. So what I have is the sheets from our local co-op, and this shows what I'll be paying for uh, each of these fields. I'm going to break it out up here on the board so you guys can see it. So for my 11-acre corn field, I'm putting down to cow corn. Uh, the variety is 53.45 and I'm going to be using seven bags at 30, 30, 30, 34,000 population, excuse me. And uh, with that, the cost is going to be approximately $1,855. So I'll write that down up here. $1,855. You have to excuse my handwriting. I don't have the best handwriting in the world. But uh, the next thing that we have is the beans. And the thing about the beans is that you have to pay for the soybean treatment on top of it. The soybean treat cost is gonna be approximately $738, um, plus or minus 100, 100 bucks, because most of these conversions that I'm doing, I'm taking from the whole unit. So uh, what I got is total cost for the soybean is, S20T6, and the cost for that is going to be $2,000. $2,000. Uh, and on top of that is the $738. So my total seed cost this year for the 44 acres is going to be $4,000. $4,000. $807. And like I said, my handwriting is the best. But this gives you an idea uh, for the total cost for the seed. Now the next thing we have to cover is the fertilizer, and that's the next thing. All right, so the next thing we're gonna cover is the fertilizer. And I'm not putting down, personally, any fertilizer on my soybeans this year, but I am going to be putting down fertilizer on the corn. Uh, you can put down fertilizer on beans, but typically you might want to do that on a year where the return is a little higher than what you might expect. So, um, what we're putting down for fertilizer is 12-17-22-6S, and that stands for N, P, and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And then the 6S stands for sulfur. That is the fertilizer, and then I'm putting down urea, which is, which is listed as 4600 because it's 46 per 100 of nitrogen. And I'm putting down 325 pounds of that per acre. And the 12, 17, 22, 6S, I'm gonna be putting down 225. Um, the highest I go is typically 250, maybe a little bit more. And the lowest I'll go is about 200 pounds per acre. So the cost for the 12, 17, 22, 6S is 400, Four hundred and sixty-eight seventy-five, and I'm also putting down Instinct, which is a nitrogen stabilizer. You want to put down a, nitro a nitrogen stabilizer because it helps the nitrogen stay in the soil longer. And I believe as long as you have rain within 14 days, uh, it'll activate it, and then you have a better access to nitrogen throughout the year. So uh, fertilizer for the corn. It's going to be 468.75 plus uh, the urea rate that I'm putting down is going to cost 500, 
$86.25. So about $1,055 for the 11 acres. So there we have our fertilizer rate that we're putting down for that and the beans. So I'm not putting down any fertilizer, we don't have to put anything over here. The, nitrogen, the reason you don't have to put down as much for beans is because they don't take as much out of the soil as corn does. Corn is very nutrient, nutrient heavy, you could say, uh, it pulls a lot out of the soil. And beans produce their own nitrogen, so you don't have to worry about them there. But usually you'd like to have a little bit more nitrogen in the soil form. Um, but on a year like this, uh, you, don't, you don't really consider putting down quite as much so that when the price rebounds, um, you can put down the extra stuff then. So the next thing we're going to be talking about is chemicals for the 11 acre cornfield, and that's going to go right here. Now what I'm going to be putting down for the corn is going to be Force, Halex GT, as well as Class Act Flex, and all Class Act Flex is, is it's a oil that is used to keep the herbicide sticking to the plant. And what Halex is, is, is a post-emergence herbicide for glyphosate uh, resistant weeds and as well as force which force is effective against uh, corn rootworm which since this is a continuous corn field you're going to want to put down force to keep those uh, corn rootworm uh, beetles at bay so um, the cost for the halix is going to be $286 the class act flex is going to be $40 and the force is going to be uh, $300. And that comes out to $626 for 11 acres. Uh, this also does not include our custom applicating fees, which have to go with the fertilizer since it's broadcast and the chemicals since that's sprayed. Custom spreading on corn is $4 an acre, so it's $44. And spraying is $8.50 an acre, so $8.50 times 11 is 93.5. For chem, we're gonna put down approximately 750. Now for the fertilizer, um, the custom spreading fee there is going to be $4 an acre, so that's an extra $44. We won't include that because it's negligible, almost. Now that we've talked about the fertilizer costs and the chemical costs for the 11 acre cornfield, we're gonna move on to the bean field. And since there isn't gonna be any fertilizer put down, all we really have to worry about is the chemical. Now to start off the chemicals for the 33 acres of soybeans, uh, the first thing that's going to be going down, actually I'm just going to go ahead and list them all off now, is Sonic. It's a wide range pesticide to kill plants uh, that you don't want, as well as Roundup Power Max on a second pass, and Class Act Flex on, power, on second pass, which is that oil that uh, causes the pesticide to cling to the plant, as well as Select Max on the second pass. And the second pass is going to put down that select max. And what that is, is it is a volunteer corn killer. Um, we put it down on fields that are in a corn bean rotation because uh, then it'll kill off that volunteer corn if it is too heavy. So, um, and keep in mind that at any time, if we choose to put in or take out more stuff as the year goes on, we can. So this is just to kind of figure in our costs for the year. So our total chemical cost is going to be for the 11 acres or for the 33 acres is going to be $170 for the Roundup Power Max 170 plus for the Class Act Flex it is $83 and for the Select is $147. So our total cost for putting for spraying our beans is $880. As you can see with the extra fertilizer corn is going to cost more to input because if I break if I broke it down by acre, uh, it'd be easier to see. But I guess there's three times as many corn or beans as there is corn. So um, your inputs for corn are going to be much higher than they are for beans. Now figuring a rent, rent varies widely across your area, but what I'm going to use for this is going to be 250. Um, I'm going to figure that's an average for this area. I have heard of people paying up to $380 an acre in our area all the way down to $180. So it uh, really just depends on what you're paying. I'm not going to give you what we're paying because I know there's a lot of people who are watching this in our area who would love to find out what we're paying for rent. But that's a, a widely held secret. <laughs> 
just because uh, competition for competition reasons. So for these two fields, we're going to figure $250 an acre rent. So we're going to take 250 times 11 is $2,750. And then for the 33 acres, $8,250. And now here we have our preliminary expenses um, across the board. Actually, this pretty well should be our final expenses um, when you're talking inputs. Now another, th I'll actually go through in a little bit here and I'll discuss what our semi-total inputs are. So um, I'm gonna go through and add all these up and we should have our final, final input costs. Okay, so now I have broken up my expenses and I've, actually I've simplified them down, I haven't broken them up. And my corn inputs are $6,410 and my bean inputs are going to be $13,957. And the total cost comes out to about $20,367 total for my inputs. And that does not include any other expenses that I may have throughout the year. And I'll cover that shortly. So I'm going to go ahead and erase everything. And we're going to start bringing up numbers. So while we're on the topic of expenses, I'm going to cover what other expenses that I may have this year. And I've already done the math. And for fuel, I can expect that I'll be using around maybe... $1,200 worth of fuel, probably way more, um, or who knows, maybe even less. I, it's just a number that I had used last year, and it's what I'm going to do. It's what I'm going to be using again this year. So, um, on top of the $20,367, we're going to figure in an extra $1,200 worth of diesel fuel. So, we're going to add $1,200 worth of that, and another expense that I'm going to have is going to be crop insurance. Farmers have to cover their crops in the event that there is uh, some kind of devastating thing that happens and they aren't able to pay back their their loans or whatever they took out. So a lot of times they'll want us to pay for insurance. And what I'm going to figure in for insurance is approximately $20 an acre. Again, this is just what we used to figure my loan uh, for the last two years. So 44 acres at $20 an acre is going to be about $880. So, and again, I'm running way more acres than this this year, so I had to extrapolate a little bit. Now, with that, um, we're not going to figure in any other expenses, really. Um, we could figure in costs for repairs or other things, but if you're someone like me, you can pay for anything else offhand. Um, that wouldn't be included and to make it look a little come out a little bit better on paper so we won't figure in anything there I'm gonna run it up real quick and see what we got so my total expenses that I'm gonna figure this year are going to be 22,447 and this does not include trucking uh, I'll take that off at the end when we go to make our final um, forecast for what we could be seeing this fall in terms of revenue so Total cost is going to be $22,447. Now I'm not going to be using my exact yields uh, off of what I had seen last year. I'm going to use a lower number because I always want to figure low uh, rather than over expect because if you um, plan that you're going to be seeing so much more money or yeah, you're going to be seeing so much more money this fall than you actually are, uh, it's kind of... I like to have a little buffer, so this is how I do it. For the 11 acres, I'm going to be using approximately, I could either use 175 or 180, I'll figure a little bit lower. Um, this field had a, a yield a lot higher than that last year, but we always like to figure, figure low. So I'm going to figure about 175 BPA, which is bushels per acre, so if I'm seeing 175 bushels per acre, that equals to about 2,000 bushels. Um, figure 1,925 bushels. And there we have what we're expecting for corn. I had about eight, over 8,000 bushels last year and I was comfortable um, for contracting up to half because if you don't come up with your half, you have to pay off the grain elevator for not coming up with for not coming up with everything that you Ford contracted, which farmers never want to do. So, 
for our 33 acre bean field, um, and I haven't had beans on that field yet, but what I'm expecting, uh, figuring low is about 45 or 40. Um, I'll figure you're a little high on the beans this time. So 45 times 33 is about 1,485 bushels of beans. So here we have our total bushels. Now one of the advantages of having beans is that you don't have to factor in as much fright because beans have a lower yield and a higher, um, a higher value, really. Now I'm going to bring up the local elevator's prices and this will give me an estimate of what I can be expecting for this following year. And one thing to keep in mind is that February and into March is often uh, the lowest time or the lowest, is the time of the year where you see the lowest um, market values. So as it turns out, as of opening this morning, corn is up $2.50, uh, up to $3.50, which is exactly what I was figuring in the first place. And to me, that is really low. Um, that is figuring in your basis as well. Um, actual corn prices for December is $3.80. So after your basis, if I harvest my corn in November, um, I'll be seeing 350 and if I forward contract it. Um, and if I forward contract right now for October, it would be 346. We'll figure in November because that's what I used uh, this past year. So I have 1,925 bushels. I can do this right now, 1,925. And I'll multiply that by 17 cents less than what corn price is right now. Um, this is just, I could figure anywhere from 15 to 20 cents for, uh, for freight, and I'm gonna figure right in the middle, 17 cents. Um, so if I have 1,925 bushels, um, I'll be taking 17 cents off of every bushel. So if I take 350 and subtract 17, what do I end up with? 350 minus 17 cents, so I'll be seeing $3.33 for my corn if I were to contract today. So I'll take 1,925, multiply it by 333, and that is how much I could be expecting to see off the corn off my 11 acres. So we're figuring in 350 corn, um, 17 cents, Freight, uh, 333 actual. So that's what I'll actually be seeing back um, if there isn't any drying costs or anything else deducted off, which very well could happen. And it does happen very often. $6,410.25. So my costs for my corn right now, <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. Um, my expenses for my corn is $6,410, and I did not plan this ahead of time. This is actually my first time going through this. Now, after revenue, after freight, I'm expecting to see $6,410.25. <laughs> can't believe I actually came out $0.25 cents ahead. I was actually figuring on coming a little short, actually. So, that's pretty funny. Um, now we're going to move on to beans. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Okay. So, for our beans, um, beans that are up this morning, for October and November, they are 525 up, and there's quite a price difference here. Um, in October, our price is 863, and in November, uh, our price is 881. And normally, beans can be harvested late, very late September um, into October, and we actually harvested some last year in November, and those were our high, high, highest yielding beans. So, I have two choices. I can either use 863 or 881, and I'm going to use, mm, I'm going to use November this year, because if things were unchanged from last year, this is when I would expect to be harvesting. And I know a lot of people are going to think that's really late, and it, to me it is pretty late, but uh, for 33 acres we could do that in no time. So, um, 
since we're going to be figuring high, 881 is today's forecast for beans, and that's up pretty good. It was 850 for the longest time. So I have 1,485 bushels of beans. If I take off that 17, um, I'll write 80, 81 up here. So 881 beans. Again, 17 cents freight. Freight, whatever you want to call it. So, so what I could expect to be seeing from the beans is 864. So we have what we're actually expecting to see off the beans, 864. And if I take that by my bushels, I'll be seeing 1,485 bushels times 863. I will come up with, now beans are going to be where I'm short. I gotta be careful not to write over my sticker. So if I see that price for beans, I'm going to be receiving twelve thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars and fifty-five cents. So our bean inputs are thirteen thousand nine hundred and fifty-seven dollars. And so what do you figure looking at these two would be the better choice? Um, and a lot of people will say corn, and personally, corn is my always go-to. Um, but with the beans uh, come when the year comes, I could choose not to do a second pass if the weeds in them aren't doing terrible. And the bright side with corn here is that we often cultivate, so we don't have to put down quite as much um, herbicide. So here, here in the end is our last figures. I'm going to, if we add it all together, so I add these two up. For corn, I received $6,410.25. And for the beans, I received $12,815.55. So $19,225.76. Now, for my inputs, we'll take off $22,447. So we're actually going to come up short. Um, $22,447. So we're going to come up short. $3,000. $221.23. So as you can see, the way the markets are right now, we will actually be coming up short this year um, for our income. And the bright thing about this is that for where the market prices are right now, um, everybody's expecting them to go keep going back up. Um, and for a while there, they weren't sure if what the markets were going to do. But there's still the people who are saying that it's not going to rebound. And clearly, if if I do come up short this amount, it's not such a big number that will bankrupt me or anything like that. I could pay that back easily um, if that was the case. And mind you that this time last year, I was looking at these exact same numbers and I came up positive. So uh, there's always things to keep in mind when doing things like this, such as government subsidies. Now, the government has actually subsidied the number that I had used for uh, insurance, but there are several other programs that you can go through with the FSA, uh, the Farm Service Agency, where the government will often give you a payback for what whatever price was. I don't know what they used to come up with the numbers, but um, I should be seeing a number from the acre, these acres that I ran last year. So um, I don't know how much it'll be until the time comes, but uh, when farmers say that, when people say that farmers aren't making very money, very much money, this is what they mean. And then there's also the people out there who are saying that farmers are rich uh, as all get out. But um, farmers really only make it on the years where the price is high, like really high. Um, then there's also years where the farmers have to figure in, okay, 
we're gonna have to slash some costs, some costs in some in a few places. So this is the number that I came up with. Um, I hope you guys found this video um, a little amusing, not really amusing, but uh, informational, because not a lot of people really talk about this and discuss it. Clearly, if we're gonna come up three thousand dollars short, it would just be better not to be running the acres, right? Right. However, you also have to figure in that farmers see years where they hardly make anything or they don't make anything, but they also see years where when they average it out, it, farmers do end up okay. So bear in mind, if you're looking at your numbers and you're, it's coming up bad, keep in mind that you're not the only fish in the water. Um, just keep swimming and things will be all right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to go out and check out all of my other How Farms Work videos. Uh, be sure to subscribe, share this video if you liked it, uh, if you found it informational. So I'll see you guys next time.